Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Abase Mirvali. I'm Nicoletta Fiorucci. And we're going to do a small walkie-talkie today. And what we've decided together is that we've uh, decided on a theme. And so the way that we're going to be walking and going through the booths is very thought out. And while we walk, we will have a conversation that also tells you a little bit about us and what we do in our normal daily life when we're not walking around Artissima. And then I would like to add that we don't select the best pieces of the fair, but we try to have a, an idea, a thread to follow in order to be current and easier to be understood for people. That's, that's what. So we are not spotting the best works in the fair. This is clear. That's true. We wanted to just share with you Sometimes when you look at very simple objects, what you can also read into them. So we didn't. So we're going to start at Franco Noero in front of uh, two pieces on the floor. Okay. Okay. So this is a piece by Jason Dodge, American artist living in Berlin, Germany. And these beautiful blanket pieces that he makes, he only gives the set of instructions to the weaver that makes the object. So in this case, the weaver was in Kashan, in Kemran, Iran, in the country of Iran. And so the only prerequisites that he gives is that it should be the color of the sky and it should be the distance, the meters of the cloth should be the distance between the earth and where the clouds stop. And then the weaver has to decide what they're going to take at what point of the day and use that color to make it. So that is Iran and that is Athens. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about what our journey is going to be, yes. what we decided. Yes. First off, I would like to um, say something about uh, how the piece, you, you see the piece on the floor and then uh, it's, uh, you know, may happen that an artist creates something. There are many young people, so I think it's important to explain that this is quite unusual, but it's not so unusual, because in the museum you find uh, works we, we are thought to be on the floor, and that we should be very, very careful, not touch them, not uh, ruin them. So this is a way the pieces are installed, which is new, is different, and then requires a lot of attention and uh, contemplation. Uh, I, th this work reminds me uh, another work quite similar but with completely different mood, uh, which are the blankets by Christodoulos Panayotou, who is a, a Cy an artist from Cyprus, uh, actually from Athens. Okay. And then he had, a, I don't think it's a secret, he had a very important uh, illness when he was uh, adolescent, so he had to stop with the, his career or being a dancer, something that he loved more than anything else. So uh, he kept, he became an artist and he kept on producing this amazing backdrop of a theater and folding them without using any rope. But you buy this piece that you are perfectly aware of what they contain, but you cannot open them. So it's an unfold life that is his life. And then you learn the frustration. Here that we have imagination. And, and the it's an unfolded sky. It's an unfolded sky. It's romantic, yes. but uh, it's nature. While in the Christodoulos work, there is a human being who can, is not able to express himself. So what, what we found interesting is that you often look at works and someone says to you, oh, so many artists work with tapestry or cloth. But really, their thinking comes from a different place. Their inspiration, what moves them, might be a personal experience like Christodoulos. Or in the case of Jason, all his work is really about simple gestures. Pretty much all the work that he does is about these very simple gestures, often involving a secondary collaborator, often involving an element that you have no control over, like the sky. And so it's nice. So it's not that it's the same. They come from a different passion. Yes, they have the same uh, aspect. They have the same outcome, but contains completely different message. We have to add that this is textile art. 
and I think it's about 16 meters. I think the distance is supposed to be 16 meters between where the clouds stop. So while we're talking, maybe I'm going to ask Nicoletta to share with you a little bit about what Nicoletta does in the environment. She has a project, so maybe Nicoletta, you can tell us a little bit as we walk. Thank you. Um, I'm a collector, but uh, eight years ago I founded a not-for-profit organization who uh, was based in London but operates in remote areas such as uh, Stromboli Island or Poland or um, Brazil, but mainly in Stromboli. So nature becomes our god and then uh, romanticism because the volcano reminds us that nature is much stronger than us. And now we know that nature is our great concern because with the climate change, uh, human beings are really taking a huge risk Absolutely. of not being upset anymore by nature. So, and you were mentioning in the island of Strombo in Stromboli, there's a conservative use of lights. You were mentioning that? Yes, uh, in, in Stromboli, you, you cannot, um, the, the little village, all the Olin Island actually, which are a UNESCO heritage site, they're not allowed to use public light in the night. So people go around with little torches and the effect is, the, is that you can enjoy the sky and the moon and then nature. So, so what it means that you have to kind of observe life. And in some ways, you know, artists are observers of life and they unfold stories in a much more beautiful way than we do because they don't have to use any words. And that's, uh, as a curator, that's why I was attracted to wanting to work with the arts because I thought, how amazing that they can say so much without actually using words. So now we're back to a different sky. So... And Matteo here is from the gallery. It's a young gallery in Portugal. So, Matteo, we want to talk about Renato and this work. The piece is called Mais ou Menos, which in Portuguese means uh, more or less. And uh, the gesture that is, you know, uh, informing this piece is very simple. Basically, Renato is dipping in the salt water of the ocean uh, these textiles, and then the salt uh, by crystallization will form uh, like this line, which is an horizon. So there is this idea of painting a landscape uh, with the landscape itself. And uh, then it's also a painting that goes through time because a phenomenon that is very important uh, with the ocean uh, is the tides. And Renato was observing them and he wanted to translate that phenomenon into an artwork. So basically this is the same landscape that is depicted over and over in time with the different tides. There is, there is one thing that Renato was saying, uh, which is very, very interesting while he was uh, talking to me about this piece. Uh, he was like, Matteo, think about that. The distance from Athens uh, to the west end of Europe, uh, where we were in Lisbon, is constantly changing. Twice a day, there is a different uh, distance because borders are moving because of the tide. So it's a, it's a very, very simple sentence, but a beautiful thought. So again, this is a textile art, but it's made by nature. So the nature acts as, a, as an artist and the artist allows this. So we see how an artist could be uh, uh, devoted to nature and uh, also he decide not to work and leave it to do it for him in his behalf, not in his behalf. So this is quite contemporary way of feeling. And then there is another work that show this. Could you, could you explain because you know. Oh, yeah. So basically, uh, this is a series of uh, sculptures that uh, Renato developed uh, during his uh, stay in Portugal for a month and a half. The top of it um, is um, a cast of the shapes that are left uh, on the sand, again, when the tide goes down. So these are basically drawings made by the water. And these casts are shown uh, on these uh, plinths that are 
you know, forming the sculpture, which are made in terracotta. And terracotta has always been the material that has been used by humanity to contain and transport things. So basically, each one of these uh, sculptures is containing one thing. The reason for the hole in each of them is because you can listen to the sound of the sea. So the sculpture is uh, a portrait uh, of an element of water through its absence, uh, but also through its effects of sound and visually. So they are two completely different worlds. They look like different, but they are on the, the process is the same. And this allows us to mention Documenta, the next Documenta. Uh, we met in the previous one, so two there is a, two, 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 a go, documenta. two documenta ago. And then the next Documenta is going to have a new title, which is We All Have to Learn from Athens. So which is our roots, our, the base of our civilization. So let's move to the next. And also, what I wanted to mention as we go through these works is that, you know, you can often look to these signs and read about what the artist wanted to convey, but you can also simply enjoy them as beautiful pieces. You know, this, there, there doesn't need to be a PhD involved in this. There, it's instinctual. You know, when I first saw the blankets, I, I didn't know what they were, but there was something beautiful about this small gesture. So sometimes, you know, just enjoy the work. Renato has been awarded with a special mention of the Ely Prize and the jury, I was part of the jury and everybody conveyed on the idea that he has to be recognized as uh, uh, someone who represents the future in, or the present in the perfect way. We are going to uh, a gallery from Berlin. A gallery from Berlin and we are going to see a similar work um, where the artist allows nature to work on his behalf. And then it has a completely different uh, outcome, completely different look, but we can see together. And I have to share with you that I, much like the artist, am an immigrant and he's an immigrant. So there is an element of memory and of yearning for your culture that is very much involved in his piece here. So there's three sculptures by Petrit, and they, they, this one was seen previously in the Punta de Dogana in a show that was curated by another fellow artist, also an immigrant, Jan Vo. Uh, but these beautiful pieces are hung in the nature, and the wind activates them. The wind makes them have a beautiful sound. And so again, I think there are instruments, there, there are instruments. musical instruments, they have a name, Cantarina. Cantarina. So the artist took them as a possibility to show how nature can create art because the sound is the music, is art, is an artistic expression. So once again, we see an artist who lives in a completely different continent who has the same feeling and he wants to express the same. Uh, uh, respect and, and pay tribute to nature. And Petrit often works with these elements of the nature as well. He's from Kosovo and he, he works with these elements of the nature once he moved a whole group, a chunk of grass and brought it to a different country, brought it to Switzerland. So you can see the elements, you know, he combines man-made with the natural object. And then a precious metal yes. with a very basic material. So he has a, such a freedom to use a different material and leave that nature to do the last touch, which is sound. So it's interesting because these artists, you know, Renato in particular, he's very young. So you have a whole generation of artists that are very much working with the internet and appropriating the image. But then you have a whole group of artists uh, that work with found material very uh, accessible material that is not so expensive and they allow their collaborators to be the environment or and to send us a message to send us about a message. the climate change and now we are going to move to see an artist from Mexico from Mexico where I live so let's go so while while we walk here so Nicoleta said a little bit about herself I am a curator and I'm a former museum director, and I live between Mexico and Berlin. 
I've never been to Stromboli, so I look forward to going to Stromboli and seeing how you negotiate with the environment and performance. Can you tell us a little bit about all the performative uh, elements that take place during the festival in some ways? Uh, we um, try to compete with the most important natural performance, which is an active volcano. We erupt every 15 minutes, who scares people, and there is a, a very strong and important entity, and the people who live there call him Idu, means Louis. <laughs> similar to a god so <laughs> we are we compete with him which is not easy and the artists are inspired but also intimidate and then they they feel the message they feel the layout and they feel that um uh, the, the volcano can amplify the effect of their performance so we took we invite an artist leader who's we started with a uh, Nick Mouse, then Lucy McKenzie, and then we had Aru Mirza, and last year we had Camilla Rowe. So the artist leader invites his favorite artist, friends, family, and he creates a project which usually lasts uh, three weeks, two weeks, and he has carte blanche, he's totally free to do what he wants, he has a budget of course, we self-sustain, we don't receive any sponsorship, any a contribution from the state or nothing because we want to offer real freedom because as soon as you receive money you have to put some condition everybody knows it so as i can afford it i will do it's my pleasure and it's a pleasure i want to share with the artists that's really lovely so thank you for this and then here we are in stromboli because we don't have uh, the light and then we are also the artists Yes, so we, uh, yeah, no, I'm going to pass it, but we are Mexicas, where, <laughs> although he doesn't live in Mexico so often these days because he's around the world. So where are you based right now? In Paris. Okay, he's in a residency in Paris. Last we were together, you were elsewhere. Yeah. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about this work, but also in the greater context of your work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've been having a narrative about the elements and dreaming in the mm -hmm. sky. So why did you take the electrical elements away? And tell us a little bit. Yeah, well, the hello. Nice. Rodrigo uh, Hernandez. Rodrigo Hernandez. So we... I... I decided to take the lights off and paint gray like this to kind of create a space where time goes a little bit slower than outside of this tiny square, no? And uh, because the project is related to the dreams a curator has uh, about murals, a murals that a Mexican artist did in the 40s. And, um, and so the project really follows the pace of the dreams. So dreams really follow a pace that is very unique and very, you cannot force it to go faster or to be repetitive. I mean, they really follow their own rules, no? So uh, this is like a concept that is interesting for me to, to work with, no? Like to create your own rules to, 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 to work and to produce, you know, what you want to do. And so in this case, the three paintings that you see are... Uh, the three first dreams of the series is a series that it's progressing still. And um, this is the first, and this is the second, and this is the third. I mean, now that we're in front of the third, I can tell you what the dream is. This, this little object uh, is um, a vase, a terracotta vase in the shape of a dog, a typical dog from Mexico. And in the dream that this creator has, the, the, the vase of the dog is taken out of the earth because they were, you know... Uh, like lost in the earth when time passed, no? And uh, the moment when this object is taken out of the earth, the object has a dream about the end of the world, no? So here the little dog is, if you get closer later, you see that the, the you know, the, the scenery in the back is sort of like an apocalyptical uh, atmosphere, no? And uh, so in this case, it's like an object having a dream and the painting is about the dream. So I think, in a way, this little space is, um, I mean, a space where, where, where you get into a spiral also of reality and fiction because the story, if you want to take one of the little papers that are behind later, um, is really uh, connected to the story, no? And yeah, 
Before leaving, let's take the occasion to explain this is a very classical way. It's a camp, it's a oil on, on wood. So it's a very traditional way to express art. It, even though this, the boot is quite adventurous because there's no light, but still we have now we have, it's not textile art, it's not nature, it's a, it's a man with this uh, concern, his imagination, who was together with a curator. So it's contemporary painting, yeah. painting. Let's move to the last stand. When you work on the projects, you, do you look at any particular medium? Do you favor a medium over another medium? Or do you like the experimentation which, with what, whether it be painting or performance or sculpture? Um, How do you approach it? I'm interested in the avant-garde, in the, in the emerging artists emerging art, the new process, but of course I love paintings, I love traditional process. For me, uh, the message is important, the language, the currents, and the, the consciousness uh, with, with, um, that artist has when, when it works, what he wants to express. So this is completely different. Yes. Actually, Lucy, the artist uh, that this belongs to, is, uh, often collaborates and um, has a joint project as well. So maybe you want to tell us about this project in particular. You have to speak in here. Because okay. So, so this, is, um, this is by two artists we work with. Well, really it's by, we worked with one of the artists, Lucy McKenzie, and then she developed a project where she wanted to um, start producing a, a clothing line, but in a very limited sort of uh, artist-based practice manner from a studio, working with a friend of hers who's also interested in certain... Um, certain ideas around fashion. But this was very specifically linked to um, manufacturing processes and, um, and uh, factories and fabrics in Scotland. She was very interested in certain type, kinds of style that came out of the provinces, if you like, away from the major centers of fashion and, um, and how they were used in terms of, um, in terms of uh, 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 creating uh, alternative uh, identities. So, for instance, here this this centres around a, a kind of a particular taste in um, in casual clothing, which actually then uh, in the eighties this comes from the eighties, and in this this interest in casual clothing developed into a whole subculture of uh, youth who were called casuals and who were also very violent on the football terraces. They were kind of uh, coming from the working classes, but they were disguising themselves in many ways in some of the most sort of uh, affluent looking uh, fabrics and clothing lines. So she was interested, Lucy McKenzie, the artist, has always been interested in uh, visuality as a form of uh, propaganda. She's always been interested in propaganda and decoration and decoration as propaganda. And, and uh, obviously, you know, this is extremely relevant to art thank you Mike. i actually i actually have a sweater that i bought from atelier you do? yes okay. i bought it in vienna i was very cold and it's a very well made uh, shetland thing. kind yeah. of sweater but yeah. if i buy something like that how do how do we store it uh, what, what can i do yeah. what, what is the bed is the furniture can we use it? with the wall what is a painting yeah, what it is it's quite enigmatic it's it's what it's 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 all one piece it's both um uh, it's a it's both an art object and a and a scenario setting if you like so um if you did sort of introduce yourself into the work and sat on the bed you would be kind of essentially being kind of obviously kind of becoming part of it in some way or another this is all for mica for Mica ref oh, referencing okay. kind of certain sort of cafes, yeah. you know, that and relate to this. We talked about uh, the moon, the night, the dream. Now we go to sleep. We do. So, okay. we good night to everybody. The, 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 the talk is over. Yes, bye bye.